In this video, we're diving into how DC-DC converters work. Let's break it down step by step. All right, let's talk about how DC-DC converters work. Basically, they take the voltage you already have and run it into the voltage your device or load actually needs. These converters are built using a few key components. You've got the MOSFET and diode, which are semiconductor parts, and then the inductor and capacitor, which are passive components. By arranging this together in different ways, we can create different types of circuits, each with its own function. Let's build a simple DC-DC converter using just one of each component. Since we only have one capacitor and we want the output voltage to stay steady, we'll place the capacitor right next to the output load. Now with the remaining components, we'll put the MOSFET at the input to control the connection to the source. The inductor goes between the MOSFET and the capacitor and we'll add the diode to give the inductor a path when the switch is off. So what does this setup actually do? In DC-DC converters, the MOSFET acts as a switch. We control it by sending pulse, turning it on and off. This pulse has a period called TS. The switch stays on for a time equal to D times TS and off for the rest of the cycle, which is 1 minus D times TS. There is a key point in the circuit where the diode, MOSFET and inductor all meet, called stability node. When the switch is on, the voltage at that point equals the input voltage. The inductor sees the difference between the input and output voltage. And since that voltage is steady, the current through the inductor increases linearly. When the switch turns off, the inductor keeps pushing current through the diode. The voltage at the stability node drops to zero, and the inductor now sees a voltage equal to the negative of the output voltage. It starts releasing its energy to the output, and its current drops linearly. To figure out how the input and output voltage relate, we use something called the volt-second balance. In simple terms, the area under the inductor's voltage curve over one cycle has to be zero. V in minus VO times DTS minus VO times one minus D times TS. That all adds up to zero. When we simplify that, we get a formula shows how the output voltage depends on the duty cycle. If the duty cycle is zero, the output voltage is zero. As the duty cycle increases, the output voltage goes up proportionally. The highest it can go is equal to the input voltage. So this converter steps the voltage down and is called a buck converter. Now, if we swap the position of the inductor and diode, we get a different circuit. We'll need to do a fresh analysis because the buck converter rules don't apply here. Enjoying the content? Give a like, subscribe for more power electronics tutorial. Don't miss out. Let's look at how this new topology works. When the switch is on for DTS, the inductor connects to the source and starts storing energy. The diode is reversed by us, so the load gets its energy from the capacitor, which starts to discharge. When the switch turns off, the inductor charges the capacitor but because of the capacitor direction, the capacitor's voltage polarity flip too. So we need to reverse the capacitor's orientation. In this mode, the inductor sees a voltage equal to the negative of the output voltage. Again, using volt-second balance, we can find the relationship between input and output voltage. At zero duty cycle, the output is zero. At 50%, the output equals the input. And as the duty cycle approach 100, the output voltage shoots up. Technically, it goes to infinity. Also, the output voltage has the opposite polarity of the input. This converter can either step the voltage up or down depending on the duty cycle, and it's called a buck boost converter. Now, if we swap the inductor and MOSFET with each other, we get yet another topology. Right away, you will notice the diode needs to flip to keep the inductor current pass when the switch is off and the capacitor direction needs to change too. When the switch is on, the inductor gets energy from the source. Its current rise linearly and its voltage equals the input. 
The diode is reversed bias, so the load gets power from the capacitor. When the switch turns off, the inductor sends current through the diode to charge the capacitor, and its current drops linearly. The voltage across the inductor now equals the input voltage minus the output voltage. Using volt second balance, again, we get a formula that links input and output voltage. The graph shows that at a zero duty cycle, the output equals the input. As the duty cycle increases, the output voltage climbs, and in the theory, it becomes infinite at 100%. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and drop a comment. That way, we can keep making more videos like this.